I'm Nettie Owens. I'm a certified professional organizer in chronic disorganization. My company is Sapari Solutions and I help business owners get more done. That's my main theme anyway. <laughs>
running your business, of handling the stuff that's coming up, and really focus on the activities that are going to grow you, that are going to move you forward, that are going to launch you into your biggest growth. And there are books on this, right? One of my favorite, E-Myth by Michael Gerber, talks about the different kinds of business owner that you are. And you really want to be working on the business, not in the business, as the owner of the business. So how do you do that? What I've found is really focusing in on your most pressing business growth activities and not putting them off to what are my year goals? That's too far away. Even your quarterly goals is, are too far away. So I want you to think about on a monthly basis, where would you like to be in 30 days? And then break that down even further so that you ask yourself this question, what can I do today to make that 30 day vision a reality for myself? Time management is a huge buzzword and to be totally real here, there is no such thing. <laughs> You'll see it in my marketing, but it's kind of just this created concept, right? And I'm gonna speak to the moms and the parents out here because once you add not just caring for yourself and your spouse, who you're kind of hoping is fairly able to do that on your own, on their own, but now you add into the mix caring for children as well as balancing your professional life, um, it can be daunting and sometimes seem completely impossible. My experience has been to become really laser focused. You don't have time for the frivolous fun things that maybe business owners without children might be able to waste their time on. On, you really have to whittle it down to the most important activities. So if something seems like a great idea but isn't necessarily going to save you time or make you money, then it's something that's going to have to be put on hold. Having that morning routine to get yourself up and running uh, first thing is just critical and having a hard and fast deadline to stop work so that you can refocus on your family is another very important step in your day. So on a day-to-day -day basis, you're going to get up in the morning. Um, if you read the literature, most very successful business owners have a morning routine. They're not just flying by the seat of their pants. They're not asking, you know, what does everyone else need me to do or answering email first thing. They actually have the steps that they would complete every morning. That might be the ritual way that you make your coffee and eat your breakfast to having a stretching routine or any of those kinds of activities that then get you ready for really being focused on your work. The thing I'm going to ask you to do is to visualize and so you're going to visualize your success over the next month. On a monthly basis write down the four biggest activities you need to focus on to get yourself there such that on a daily basis you can look at that activity and say all right, if my goal is to bring on 10 new customers this month, what do I need to do today? Do I need to call one new person? Do I need to send an email? Do I need to uh, reach out to a strategic partnership? What is the specific activity that I can take action on right now today? So you incorporate that practice into your morning routine and start your day with it in order to not get sucked in right to the fires right as soon as you set foot in the office as soon as you open your computer it's just a barrage of everybody else's needs coming at you um, and that's why it's important that we we bring the focus down to a monthly level and then down to a daily level i'm not going to ask you to focus on all four things that will grow your business on a daily basis i'm actually thinking that you're looking at maybe one or two and steps that are so small so what I've found over my years in uh, working with clients and helping them organize is that we often make the projects for ourselves way too big. So if we want to add, as our, my example before, 10 new customers, 10 new clients in a month, that in and of itself is just a much too lofty goal. You're not going to know what to do on a daily basis. But if it becomes just reaching out to one person, that's something you can do even when there are fires going on. And you can hold yourself accountable to that one very small task. So yeah, holding yourself accountable when you're the boss, 
that's pretty tough, right? You're used to, if you've had a corporate job in the past, somebody saying, this is due, this deadline is happening. And it can be rough to be alone out there. So my recommendation is to not be. Um, find yourself a great accountability partner to keep you to the goals that you have. And that's one service that I provide in my business, to be an accountability partner to very focused, growth-oriented uh, business owners and focused in that they have a big goal that they're reaching for, not that they are necessarily providing that focus for themselves. But you need somebody in your life that's going, did you do that today? Did you get that done? I talked to one business owner and he said, oh my gosh, you're just like my wife, right? Did you do this thing? Not to be a nag, but to just keep pulling it back into your vision and asking you questions like, if that doesn't get done, how significant would that be for you? Or if it does get completed, how important would that be to grow in your business? I think overwhelm is just part of, just part of every business person's experience. And there's a good reason for it. The things that brought you into being interested in being a business owner, you had ideas of changing the world, of earning tons of money, of um, launching a new product, and you're an idea person. You, you generate ideas, you see vision, and those are great assets to have, but they're not fabulous at, for running a business. So part of maintaining that feeling of not being overwhelmed is to have the structure in your business that prevents it. So that can be an employee, that can be an operations manager or a partner in your business that balances you, or it can be creating or utilizing tools that help you stay structured throughout your day. In both cases, we're looking for something outside of your brain space that, um, that provides that structure for you. So either a fabulous planner or a partner uh, in your business. It could even be a coach. I mean, somebody that's providing the structure for you to help keep you out of being overwhelmed and bounce ideas off of, you know, you can say, hey, I've got this great idea. And they can say, that's fabulous next year <laughs> and kind of uh, tone that back for you. So being a mom in business is probably one of the best gifts that you can give your children to see you as a woman owning and operating and leading in that particular area. That being said, it can be the most crazy making role that you will ever try and fill in your, in your life. I feel like what's helped me through this is to find other mom business owners. And there are some really great groups. Um, Boss Moms is one of my favorites. It's on Facebook and the woman who facilitates that has some fabulous programs, but it's a great community and tribe. You need some place where you can put the, both of these concepts, right? This idea of you being mom and nurturing and supporting your kids and also being high powered, high energy, getting things done kind of a, a personality. And, and so you need someone who gets both of those. So whether it's a girlfriend that you that's also doing the same thing, a mentor who is where you would like to be in five years, um, or a tribe like a group on Facebook. You need that community. It's something that women have always had and I think in our current culture and our current time period it's been somewhat lost. We're less connected to other women and I think we need to get back to that connection.